The worst thing about adultery is adultery doesn't work. We know it doesn't work because it doesn't last. It doesn't give us what we're looking for. I mean, maybe if we were purely physical beings, adultery probably wouldn't matter. But we are spiritual beings. And sex can only occur as a sacred act when two people really know each other. When they really, really know each other. They have to know each other. Like Adam knew Eve. Whenever you know a person, you conceive things with each other. And if there's nothing being conceived, you're not really knowing them. When you really are in oneness with a person, you can look at them by something that happens to their eyebrow and you can tell when they don't like something. You'll be able to see the subtleness of their nostrils flare. Other people won't have a clue, but you're like, oh, so, oh, they mad now. And you know them you, you, because you know them. You know them intimately. You don't just know them on a surface. You know them. You know what they're thinking. Even when, when the folks are talking to them, you know about whether they're going to buy into this or whether they're saying, let's get on, let's hurry up and get out of here. We're just listening to this, uh, this timeshare presentation just so we can get our free tickets. <laughs> but marriage is a covenant of agreement where there's a commitment that you make to one another to care for them, to honor them, to cherish them, to sacrifice for them. And when all that we can promise is that we will stay in the relationship as long as the joy lasts, then we are really shallow and superficial. That means that we don't really know what a real relationship is all about, is you can only stay there as long as the joy lasts. Thomas Fuller said, those are poor indeed who can promise nothing. Really a poor person who cannot promise anything. Simone Signoret wrote, chains don't hold a marriage together. She said, it is the threads, hundreds of tiny threads which sew people together through the years. Just tiny, hundreds of tiny threads. All of the stuff that you will have gone through that actually helped to bind you together. Adultery is, is, is about a lack of focus. When somebody has gone out and done something, God can take the very thing that put heat on your relationship and use it to bond you together. You'll be surprised of how God can work in spite of some things. And may I just tell you that sometimes the greatest mistress to a marriage is not a person, it's a thing. Sometimes it's your job, it's your career, sometimes it's your obsession with a hobby. It is a thing that steals your time and your affection and your attention. And that can become just as much as a mistress as another human being. But it's the kind of immorality that is hard to correct because it feels so moral. And you'll be surprised at how that happens. But let me just tell you this. That God knows that adultery is not a, a thing that works for us as it relates to relationship because it's, it's about what I can get. And what I can get is the motive behind lust. Love is never about what I can get. Love is always about what I can give. True love gives to others at the expense of self. And lust seeks to get at the expense of others. And so it is not even about what we can get from a person. It is about what we can give to them. And when we have come into proper relationship with God, the Bible teaches us in 1 John chapter 1 and verse 9, that if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and then to cleanse us of all unrighteousness. And may I tell you that it is not enough to just confess, it's not enough to just apologize, it's not enough to just say I'm sorry. We have to get cleansed from the sin. He says if we confess our sins, he is faithful to forgive us and to cleanse us if you don't get cleansed, then the same stain that was in you that motivated you to do it the first time will motivate you to do it again and again and again and again. And so Jesus prayed in, in St. John chapter 17 and verse 17. He said, sanctify them through thy truth. And then Jesus said, thy word is truth. Sanctify them through thy truth because he's trying to get us cleansed. And whatever it is that you might be struggling with, whether it is adultery, whether it is murder, 
whether it is lying, whether it is stealing, whether it is violating the Sabbath, whether it is having something that you put before God. Whatever your sin is, whether it is gossip, whether it is overindulgence in something, whatever your sin is, right now is a time for you to take a real look at personal introspection. Take a look within and say, search me, God, and know my heart. Try me and know my, my thoughts. And if there be any wicked way in me, God, lead me in the way that's everlasting. I think that we need to ask God to cleanse us from the very things that keep contaminating our lives. Proverbs chapter 16 and verse 6 says, By mercy and truth iniquity is purged, and by the fear of the Lord men depart from evil. And you have to understand that sometimes the cleansing, even though you can ask for forgiveness and be forgiven instantaneously, the, for, the, the washing to get cleansed of the thing is a process. It is like a washing machine. And I, I noticed in the washing machine it had uh, uh, three different settings uh, of light, normal, and heavy. But all of it's dirt. It, it doesn't matter whether you feel like you have light sin or whether you feel like the sin that you're doing is normal because everybody else is doing it or whether it's you are heavy laden with it heavy uh, you still have to be washed and, and so uh, I want you to notice that when 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 you use a washing machine because we need to get cleansed that the first thing is that it must be filled and so he will fill it, it you get filled with water the machine fills with water and then there's an adjutant a detergent that comes in so that it then goes through those motions of having to be agitated. Isn't it amazing that in God's whole process of cleansing you that you find yourself agitated with something that is rubbing you, as it were, the wrong way? It, it, it's moving you and twisting you in various ways. And, and then when you really got heavy sin, he just lets you soak. Well, you're in a situation and you just can't even get out of this. You feel like you're drowning in it and you're just in a soak cycle and you're just soaking there where the water is just there but it's part of the cleansing process because some stains need to soak because maybe you need to drown some thefts that's trying to kill you and so he'll just soak your life and, and, and then it's, it's amazing how he will rinse and there's a rinsing that comes a rinsing and then you get on the spin cycle have you ever felt that your life was spinning out of control and the children are crazy, the relationship is crazy, and everything on your job is crazy, your money is funny, your body is start feeling, and you get bad news on this end and that end and this bill and that bill and the other bill, and stuff is spinning out of whack, and God knows what he is doing because he's got everything in control. He's got you on a cleansing cycle, and you got to go through all of the cycles in order to be cleansed. And some of you may be in the soaking stage, and some of you may be in the rinsing stage, and others of you are just spinning, just spinning. What in the world is going on? what's happening to me what's happening maybe he's trying to wring you out there is something that God is doing as he cleanses us as he just washes us as he sanctifies us because we have committed adultery we have gotten ourselves contaminated and impurity in our souls the heart of God is saying that I I want my bride to have special bath prepared and spices and sweetness and it's the work of the apothecary that comes with all kinds of anointing that will soften your skin because you've gotten callous because you were hurt. And God says, I want to tenderize you. I want to cleanse you and I'm going to let you come out of this thing smelling like a rose. And God says, and when I finish cleansing you, the people, when they look at you, they won't recognize and believe that you have been through what you've been through. They will not believe that you have endured what you have endured God is saying that when you tell your testimony, folks are not even going to believe that you came from that. They're not even going to believe that this happened to you and that that happened to you. Because God says, I'm going to bring you out of this thing and you're not, I'm going to bring you out of the fire and you're not going to smell like smoke. Thank you for watching Power for Living with Bishop Dale C. Bronner. Until next time, God bless you.